Hey guys, as some of you who have watched my channel for any length of time know, I have used a weight loss drug for probably about the past year. I didn't come to this conclusion on my own. I actually learned about it from my wife, Mrs. Grey Dog. Hi, Mrs. Grey Dog. Hi. This is her first time on camera, but I thought it would be useful for everybody to hear her perspective on this. I submitted a bunch of questions to you guys, and so I'm gonna get her to talk about her experiences probably a lot less about me and more about her. Uh, hopefully this will be an organic conversation. We'll find out. How are you doing today, Mrs. Gray Dog? Good, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for showing up on camera. I know it's a little bit of an ask. Just a little. Okay, so how did you find out about Manjaro? So I found out about Manjaro um, because my cousin was taking a weight loss shot. It was not Manjaro, but that's when I first learned about the existence of this type of medication. Um, and I started doing some research um, through TikTok, which is where I do all of my good research. Um, and that's how I first learned about Manjaro. Okay. How long have you been on it? Uh, it will be a year in the beginning of December. Okay. So 11 months, 11 and a half months. Yeah, okay. just about. Okay. So I should probably break in with neither of us are doctors or medical professionals. None of this is going to be medical advice. We're just talking about our own experiences. If you're interested in any of these things, I really urge you to talk to a healthcare professional and maybe more than one because uh, not every doctor is the same based on our experiences and I'm sure that probably many of you have experienced the same thing. How did you go about getting it prescribed? So uh, just as you were saying, uh, you should get more than one, one opinion from a doctor if you need to. Um, you know, I talked to my primary care physician about it first. Um, you know, they they knew about like the GLP-1 agonist medications um, and were a fan of them, but not uh, currently prescribing them to patients. Um, and so then um, in my research, I discovered, you know, that there's a telehealth industry. Um, and so I researched a lot of the different telehealth or telemedicine companies. Um, you know, found one that had a doctor that uh, was licensed in Virginia um, and set up an appointment with them. Um, and the way those work is you pay a subscription fee. Um, it's monthly, usually. So uh, ours costs about $80 a month. Um, and then you're, uh, and then they, they write a prescription just like you would get a prescription from your regular doctor. It's sent in right to the pharmacy down the street from our house. Um, and then that's when you know it processes through your insurance and things like that. And I know we're going to talk about cost and insurance in a few minutes, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, but it works just like as if you were going to a doctor's appointment. Before we even get into the basic question, which everybody wanted to know with side effects, Probably before even that, some people asked about dosing. Some people asked about, is it possible to take a higher dose pen and turn it into smaller doses? Because sometimes the starter doses are harder to find at pharmacies. Talk to me about that. So before we go into that, let's talk, let's be clear that we are speaking specifically about our experiences with Maljaro. Um, you know, there are other uh, GLP-1 drugs out there, Saxenda, Wagovi, things like that. We don't have any experience with them, so I can only speak to Maljaro. Uh, so the way Maljaro works is it's a once a week um, injection and um, you start at the 2.5 dosage and then you go up to 5 and then 7.5, 10. 12.5, which is what I'm currently on. What are you on right now? Seven and a half. Okay, 7.5. Um, and then 15 is the highest dose that you can go to. So I actually saved my my pen for, for you guys to look at this morning just so that everybody could sort of see what the component looks like. And I think that Wagovi is a bit different. So in talking about the doses, um, Again, not a medical professional. Um, I am one of those people who takes my medication as it is prescribed to me, as the uh, manufacturer intended. I have heard that there are ways that you can inject the medication out of this and then you know, draw it up, I guess, into your own vials or whatever. Um, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, not a chemist, um, not interested in, in doing that. Um, I'm sure the internet could give lots of people directions on that, um, but I use as prescribed. Um, so it's a it's an interesting mechanism, and I know you've probably seen 
before on, on Jay's page, but you know, it's got this gray stopper here and you take that off and then the needle is inside of here. Uh, there's a locking mechanism since I've already uh, used this cartridge is on the unlock and then there's a button here and you just push this up against your skin and press the button. So it's, it's fairly easy and straightforward. I know a lot of people sort of have some concerns about um, giving themselves injections and, and I was a little freaked out about that at first too and I, I am not needle phobic. I mean, uh, some people definitely have needle aversions. So. Certainly, um, and I don't. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm the person where if you go to get your blood drawn, I don't like to look at the phlebotomist yeah. while they're doing it. Uh, so so you were kind enough to give me my shots for many months. Yeah. Um, but I'm a big girl now, and and I give them to to myself. Um, you can give yourself your shots in a couple of different locations on your body. You can do the top of your thigh, um, around your belly button, um, or the back of your arms. Um, those are the places that the uh, pharmaceutical company recommends that you do it. And so that's what, and, we, and I have done various locations throughout my body, just kind of playing around and yeah. stuff. I, I started in my thigh, done the back of my arm, and now I'm sort of exclusively in, in my stomach area. Yeah. I think the internet lore is that if you rotate injection sites, that it's better for whatever reason. They say that uh, it avoids plateaus. In doing a bunch of reading and watching videos from other doctors, I don't know that it makes that much of a difference in the long run, but it might just be better for you in general, I think. I don't know. I, I'm pretty much the same thing, mostly only in the stomach at this point. Uh, I don't find it to be painful at all. You feel like a little teeny pinch, but that needle is so small. So one of the big questions people asked was side effects. Like what kind of side effects have you had? Uh, so for me, the major side effects that I've had, uh, no matter what the dosage has been, um, extreme fatigue the day after my shot. So I take my shots on Saturdays and um, I usually sit on the couch on Sundays and take a lot of naps. Um, you know, it's, it's not debilitating, and, and if I had to get up and go do something on a Sunday, um, I certainly could, um, but I do find myself to be much more tired the day after my shot. Um, usually by about Monday um, afternoon, the fatigue is kind of cleared up and I'm, I'm back to 100% normal. Uh, some of the other things that I have uh, personally experienced has been nausea. Um, I have found that it has been controlled uh, with me based on A, what I eat, and um, occasionally taking you know, a Dramamine anti-nausea. Uh, my doctor did write me a prescription for Zofran, which is a you know, prescription uh, for anti-nausea pill, and I think I've taken, I think he gave me eight to start with, and I have four left, uh, so it's never gotten really, really bad, and I've actually never uh, gotten ill from, from my nausea, so. Those are the two primary side effects for me. Occasionally heartburn, um, but I had that before, so it's hard to know what to chalk that up to. Yeah. So. Same, same. Yeah, I had heartburn before. Sometimes I have heartburn now. I think I have less heartburn since being on this medicine. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that one of the things with the side effects, especially the gastrointestinal uh, side effects, is that um, a lot of it depends on what you eat and and you know i don't know if you want to go into details yeah. now about you know what sort of changed between what we've eaten stuff but the, but the truth is is that you know this medication works one of the ways it works is by being an appetite suppressant um, and delaying your gastric emptying and so you can out eat your medication and if you do that you're going to get sick to your stomach and you probably are going to throw up i mean or you know have severe heartburn or something like yeah. that and so you know if you eat really acidic food or food that you know upsets your stomach then you're probably going to end up with some nausea um so i think you just have to be careful yeah for me side effects I have had some of the fatigue, but not as bad as Mrs. Grey Dog has. For me, really kind of the ones that everybody talks about, I had a little bit of nausea. I did, and we're gonna get a little more graphic, I apologize, but I did vomit a couple of times that I, I attribute to me overeating, like to what she was saying, like eating past what your stomach and your body's telling you is good to go when you're on this medicine. Um, occasional diarrhea, occasional constipation, 
those really went away once I'd been on the medicine for a while. I think the first few weeks was really the difficult time for me. For the most part, I've kind of learned to just eat in such a way that it does not trip any of those side effects. And so for the most part, my weeks go on without any real aftershocks or weird stuff from the medication. I will say this too, and again, not to be gross, but um, you know, constipation is a very common side effect among all of the GLP-1 medications because of the delayed gastric emptying. Um, it, beca- it can become a real problem for some people, um, you know, but I think like all side effects, if you stay on top of it and you're monitoring it and not afraid to take action to either alleviate it or prevent it, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I eat a lot of apples because the fiber helps me. Um, you know, we take Miralax sometimes. Occasionally, yeah. Yeah, things like that. But I think the key is with any side effect, don't let it scare you because you, you know, it's, uh, it's what is it, runny nose and death is what you hear at the end of every pharmaceutical yeah, commercial. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, it, don't let it scare you. I think that you just need to be prepared for it understand that it's it's probably going to happen and understand that there are things that you can do uh, to alleviate it or uh, to stop it from happening completely. Yeah. Um, on a break, Mrs. Gray Dog mentioned, hey, we haven't even talked about how much we weighed when we started. So nobody really asked that, I think, but it probably is a data point for some of you, especially if this is your first time seeing us. How much did you weigh before you started medication? So I'm five, four and a half, um, so height wise, and then I weighed 194 pounds. And uh, at my first doctor's appointment, he calculated my BMI to be 30, whether you prescribe to that notion or not. Uh, I started at 228 and my BMI was 34. I'm like 5'8", 5'9". I say I'm 5'9". She says I'm 5'8". Uh, either way, I'm not getting He's taller. Perfect. I'm not getting taller as I age. So I was in the obese category, like in it a little bit, not not at the edge of it. I was pretty far into the obese category if you're going by BMI. We'll talk about how much weight we lost, but I'm gonna save that for a surprise at the end, how far we went down. And I might actually have to break out a calculator and do some math if you wanna talk about percentages. What were your big challenges while you were doing this? Yeah, that's a great questions. Um, In terms of um, day-to-day challenges, I think one of my uh, biggest challenges at the beginning was I had these interesting food aversions. Uh, So I used to be a very big coffee drinker. Um, I would drink, you know, almost a whole pot of coffee to myself every day. Um, And coffee, just even the smell of it in the beginning, uh, you know, of taking this medication, really was a turn off to me and so I would kind of drink one cup um, and back to about one and a half cups maybe two a day but nowhere near like I was before coffee just you know it's it's not my thing anymore um, my other interesting food aversion is red meat uh, you know I used to love a bloody almost mooing steak um, and frankly I don't really have a big interest in steak anymore and if I do I like it much less mooing we can't we can't bring it back with a doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with some with some paddles or, yeah. and things like that. Um, you know, so so that that was just sort of an interesting sort of side note challenge for me. Um, but the, I think the bigger challenge, especially for me, was how much my relationship with food changed. Um, you know, I've always kind of considered myself a foodie. I love to cook. Um, I loved to eat and I was always the person who, you know, planned, you know, extravagant dinner parties and having people over for a meal and, um, you know, at breakfast I'm thinking about what you, what we're going to have for dinner and, and what am I craving today and, you know, the truth is, is that's probably how we ended up in this situation in the first place. It, it definitely didn't uh, make things better. Not to mention during the pandemic we kind of ate like every day was the last day of the, the earth, uh, yeah. which certainly didn't help either. Yes. Um, you know, but one of the things that this medication does that you'll hear a lot of people talk about is this concept of it reducing the food noise. Um, and, and what that meant to me and where my struggle came in was I stopped thinking about food as a source of enjoyment and a source of pleasure. 
and it really just became something I had to do to keep myself alive. Um, because the truth is, is that uh, on some of the doses of this medication, uh, I had no interest in food whatsoever. Like not even wanting to eat at all? Yeah, not wanting to eat at all, much less thinking, oh, I really like roast chicken and mashed potatoes tonight for dinner. I mean, I just did not want to eat, didn't care what I ate. Um, you know, and then when you're in that situation, then you sort of have to start focusing and prioritizing nutrition and things like that. But the shift in my relationship with food was drastic. And there was almost a mourning period for me um, because something that was super enjoyable and super pleasurable for me in my life um, wasn't there anymore. And so yeah. that took a lot of getting used to. And sometimes still does. You know, we went out uh, for special occasion dinner for your birthday a couple of months ago and um you know it, it was good but i didn't enjoy that meal like i would have in the past um and that was that was a little sad to me interesting i don't think i had the food aversion as badly as you had it a little bit mm -hmm. yours was strong yes what really has changed for me is probably my relationship with alcohol Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Not that I don't enjoy a cocktail or a good glass of wine now. Prior to me getting on this medication, I was a quantity kid. I was not a have a cocktail and savor it. I was have a few and then have uh, maybe a, a bunch more of something else. Beer, wine, didn't matter. And since getting on this medication... One, if I drink like that, I'm going to pay for it. But on top of that, I don't even really have the desire to do it. So it's not like I'm getting paid back on the back end and that's making me think I better not do this or it's going to hurt. But, you know, we went out last night. I had a cocktail. I thought about ordering a bottle of wine because Mrs. Grey Dog said, hey, I'll drive if you want to have more than one. And I finished that cocktail the waiter offered me another. I said, no, I think I'm just going to get a glass of wine for dinner. I drank that one glass of wine and I legitimately did not want another. It wasn't a, should I have it? I kind of want it. You know, that, that feeling where you have to kind of prioritize or decide. It wasn't a me, me having a discussion with myself. It was literally me going, I don't, I don't want another glass of wine. I think I'm good here. And a year ago, that would have never happened. If she had said, hey, I'm driving, I'd have said, I'm gonna order a bottle of wine right now and I'm gonna finish it. Like that bottle, I'm gonna consider it a single serving bottle of wine. And by the time we left that table, that, that bottle would have been gone. No desire to do that, none. And that is a radical shift from how I was a year ago. Like I said, I still enjoy alcohol, but not, not in quantity, not like I did. Yeah, and to be clear, you know, it's it's, not like we had a problem with alcohol. We could certainly not yeah. drink easily if we chose to. Um, but again, I think during the pandemic, we we were coming home from work or stopping work and having a cocktail every night after work. I mean, yeah. we were drinking some form of alcohol with every meal, and yeah. that has certainly changed substantially. Yeah, M most nights I don't I don't want it. Even if I'm not going to work the next day, have like clear weekend. I, I might, I might, or I might not. It's, it's legitimately like, ah, eh, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. That's a good point. Yeah. Any other challenges? Um, there's, there's the whole new set of challenges that comes with uh, losing a substantial amount of weight and your body in its present state. And I think we're going to talk about that a little bit further down yeah. the list. Um, you know, but it's. Um, it's, it's interesting how I think when you go on a weight loss journey, as, as all the influencers kinda, like kinda, to call it. I kind of hate that. Yeah, me but. too. Me too. But I think it's interesting how, um, you know, what was hard in the beginning is easier towards the end. It's not the end. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then when you get to your goal weight, there's a whole interesting new set of challenges because I kind of thought, okay, here's here's the the, the prize, the light at the end of the tunnel, and my life's going to be perfect. And they all lived happily ever after. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you know, it, it's it's not the case. It's the real world. Um, you know, but, so but I think we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Here in a few minutes. So. Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned. Um, 
it came up several times, cost. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a big one. So again, um, we're just talking about Manjaro. Uh, all of the other medications have, um, you know, other costs. Price points. Price points, issues. Various insurance coverages or lack thereof. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, the other thing I want to say uh, before we dive too deep into this is that I understand um, that this video is coming uh, out of a place of privilege. Um, you know, we are, we are lucky to have uh, good health insurance. We are lucky to have the means to explore this this option for us. And we yeah. and and I fully understand that not everybody has that. Um, it is my sincere and fervent hope that now that this medication has been FDA approved for obesity management, yeah. that more people are going to have access to it at yeah. an easier uh, price point. Yeah. But in terms of cost, uh, let me break it down for sort of what we've paid, um, you know, and I'll, and I'll be really honest about it. So Manjaro, uh, as most of you probably know, is a type two diabetes medication that doctors are writing what they call an off-label prescription for. It's not illegal, it's not shady. Uh, apparently doctors do this uh, write off-label for a lot of different medication. The neurologists um, try to do that for my um, sleep twitches. The um, medication they prescribed for that was completely off topic, but it, it was not. For, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> but he's. But it was. Uh, it was for seizures. Oh, interesting. For seizure medicine. He's like, well, well, you know, we'll try this. It did. Uh, did nothing. But yeah. Well, as much yeah. as you twitch, I mean, it felt. It feels like a. It's like an earthquake. <laughs> Maybe an earthquake medication. Anyway, uh, so so Manjaro is being written off label. Uh, it literally just got approved by the FDA for weight loss last week. And is being marketed under a new name called Zep Bound, which is an awful name, but it is an awful <laughs> name. Um, I mean, it's not like Manjaro is all that great of a name, but that's true. But I digress. Um, so last year, so this would have been fall of 2022, Eli Lilly, who is the manufacturer of Manjaro, um, had a coupon that if you had commercial insurance, whether or not that insurance covered Manjaro, you could receive it for $25 a month. And that carried me through until February or March of this year, yeah. of 2023. Uh, and then some Elaly went in and kind of changed the terms of that savings card. Um, you know, you had to verify if you were a type 2 diabetic. Uh, some of the pharmacies stopped. Uh, we, we originally, our pharmacist was Walgreens, and then we had to switch to Walmart. Yeah, Walgreens was kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, they were being very difficult with us. Um, so all of that to say that a new savings card came out about that time, um, which, again, only took effect if you had commercial insurance. Um, which obviously we do. Thanks, babe. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and our insurance does not cover Manjaro. Uh, it will cover it um, with a prior authorization if you are a type 2 diabetic, but it will not cover it for any weight loss um, reasons. Yeah. So we are currently paying out of pocket um, for our medication. You want me to tell them how much? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we pay $432 a month per person. So almost $1,000 a month is what you and I are paying yeah. between the two of us for our medication. Uh, yeah. So, you know, two quick points about that. Like I said, I just want to reiterate, I understand that we are coming from an extreme place of privilege when I say that. And yeah. I understand that not everybody has the means to do that. But I think it also really reiterates how life-altering this drug has been for the two of us. Um, you know, that we have been willing to make budget cuts elsewhere in our finances in order to be able to continue paying yeah. for this medication. So, interestingly, I don't think it's been just an addition of that money. When it comes to our eating out bills, those went way down. Way down. So I can't say that it, it was an even Steven proposition. Like, we weren't spending that much going out, but we were spending a lot going out. And... When you're eating a whole lot more, you're getting appetizers, you're getting desserts. You're not having a cocktail or a glass of wine, you're having a, a bottle. bottle or maybe two. And we were drinking pretty reasonable stuff. 
man, those those checks started to be real. So in some ways, even though the cost of the medication has not been inexpensive, I, I think that we've probably recouped a bit of that when it comes to what we were doing dining wise. I also, with the maintenance, because I'm not using one every week now, it's kind of calmed that cost down a little bit. Uh, and I will say that I was approved for Wagovi. Like when we were starting to look at money, I got my doctor to prescribe me Wagovi. You just can't get it. Like I literally could have gotten Anywhere. on Wagovi for 25 bucks a month. Our insurance would cover that. Didn't matter. I called every pharmacy in the area. They're like, yeah, don't have it. Don't have it. Don't have it. Didn't matter. So I'm hopeful that with the appearance of ZepBound, that our insurance will put us back into that coverage category and our costs will continue to decline. But that is a hope and a prayer at this point. So, Yeah, and like you said, it, it's not a one-for-one, one, but not only did our eating out bills go down, our grocery bills have gone down substantially. Um, you know, our ABC uh, bills, that, yeah. that's the liquor store in the yes. Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah, I, uh, I can't remember the last time I was in the ABC store. Yeah. And I was in there a lot. Yep. A yep. lot. Total wine. Yeah. You know, we still stock the house with pretty nice wine, um, but... Uh, don't drink it that don't often. Don't drink it that often. Yeah. yeah. So, so, helpful. Helpful. What were the positives? What were the positives? Uh, there have been lots of them, actually. I mean, of, of course. Um, I think I mentioned before, this, this medication was really life-altering for me, not just in terms of weight loss, uh, but also sort of changing my relationship with food, um, which started as a challenge and I, I have begun to see it in a, in a much more positive fashion. Um, you know, but the, the energy that I, that I got back, because um, yeah. let's face it, if anybody else out there is a woman of a certain age and you are watching this video, then you know, you know, um, you know how tired you are and burnt out and, brain fog and a lot of other things going on um, and you know as as time went on that that lifted um, and it's hard to say what was the actual medication versus when the pounds started you know really sort of coming off maybe it's a combination of both of them yeah um, you know but my entire uh, physicality that, you know, the way I feel, how I take up space in a room, um, you know, my confidence level, things like that are, are you know, through the roof. And so yeah. those have been the big positives for me. What about you? It kind of started me moving again. Mm -hmm. I was, I was legitimately just stopping movement. Like I would not really exercising. I would just sit on the couch. Everything was harder. Everything's harder when you're heavier. You know, none of this is to be fat shaming or anything like that, but weight wise right now, it's just so much easier for me to do things. So I started exercising again. I started doing more active things again. It was just, it really kickstarted that. It, it kind of awakens a little, a little fire in you. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Let's talk about body dysmorphia. Ooh, we're gonna get a little vulnerable here. Yeah. You go first. All right, fair. I think that I still think I'm fat. Not all the time. Like I can acknowledge that I've lost weight, but when it comes to some of my behaviors, and I think in some ways some of my interactions with other people, I still feel like I'm a fat kid in some ways. And it's when I look in the mirror, when I step on the scale, the things that look back at me numbers wise and view wise, they don't really match what's going on up here. And I don't know that they ever 100% will. What about you? Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's a, it's a very interesting sort of psychological thing to get your brain to catch up where your physical body is. Um, you know, it shows up most for me, um, you know, buying clothes. Um, I tend to even now uh, buy clothes that are too big because my brain can't accept the fact that I am a certain size. Um, you know, we went shopping just the other night and I picked out a pair of pants um, 
and I held them up to you to see what you thought, and you said, oh, those are way too big for you. Yeah, they were. And, uh, and I didn't believe you, um, and I kind of thought that you were crazy, um, but I, I bought the smaller size pair of pants uh, at your suggestion, fully expecting to have to return them um, because I didn't think they were gonna fit, and they did, and every time that happens, it kind of is a little mind-blowing for me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, clothes for sure, but I think also in the, in the larger uh, perspective of things, you know, I'm very um, aware of how much space I either take up or don't take up. And I think this is very true for women. And I think if there's any women out there watching, um, you know, that they might recognize themselves in this feeling. Um, you know, but when you are, when you are a heavier woman, especially, uh, and, you know, you are at some place that's crowded or you're on an airplane sitting next to somebody you don't know, um, you know, I was constantly trying to make myself smaller in situations, right? So that, you know, I wasn't brushing up against somebody or touching somebody or in somebody's way. And I still find myself in those situations, you know, doing this to try to make myself smaller so that somebody can walk past me or get behind my chair or whatever. And that doesn't need to happen anymore. Um, I, I am small enough that I don't need to do that anymore, but I still find myself doing that because I still think that I take up more space than I have a right to. Yeah, yeah. In an area. How often do you get on the scale? I weigh myself, uh, when I started taking Manjaro, I weighed myself once a week. I would weigh every um, Saturday morning before I took my shot. Um, I have a much different relationship with the scale than you do. Uh, you see your weight as a data point. Uh, I, at the beginning of this process, was, um, viewing the scale as, um, I gave it a lot more power than Your it enemy. actually, yeah, well, and I gave it a lot more power than it actually has, right, because whatever the number on that scale said, um, that would mean I was either having a good day or a really bad day, right, and all the way to the point where I'd be like, well, this stuff isn't working, and I, why am I doing this and spending this money and stuff, and it's, it's not working, um, you know, once I learned to change my relationship with the scale, I started weighing myself more often um, and treating it like a like a data point. I'm not quite as crazy as you are because you will weigh yourself multiple times a day, uh, but I do weigh myself every morning now. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, you already know my answer. Um, exercise. Why do you weigh yourself every day? I just, I can't say that I always have because I wasn't doing that when I got really fat. I do it occasionally and it really kind of just underscored, yeah, you're probably too heavy. You know, I had doctors tell me I was too heavy. I knew I was too heavy. It's, it's like going, well, yes, the sky is still blue. The sun is still comes up and sets. It was kind of this immutable fact. So it didn't really need for me to get on the scale every day to understand that. But once I started getting down the weight loss journey again, it became back to that data point. It was like, how much have I lost? Guys, he'll brush his teeth and then weigh himself again just to see if brushing his teeth made a difference. Like. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Eh, you know, it, it's not quite to the point of obsessive. Like there are days where I don't, but most days I do. I don't always weigh myself multiple times a day. Probably about three times a week I do. Um, especially if I've been working out a lot that week then I typically will. And I, part of it is that the scale doesn't just give me numbers. It gives me its estimated body fat percentage, which is based on electrical, what the BIA. Oh, I, so, I don't even pay attention to, yeah. that, to that. I think so, our scale has a lot of fancy features that I don't even care does. about. Did I mention that there's another one I want instead? Oh, no, we'll get into it. <laughs> you're, you're so bougie. I know, I know. You want all the fancy stuff. Yeah, so exercise. Let's yeah. talk about, I hate it, I don't do it. Well, you can be browbeaten into it. I can, but I think that it's a good thing to talk about. Um, and I, I want to talk about exercise for, from my perspective in conjunction with uh, diet, right? Um, so again, I, I don't exercise. I have lost weight um, on Manjaro 
without uh, exercise. Um, I am getting into potentially lifting weights, um, but that's primarily because as a postmenopausal woman, it's good for your bones because I don't want to be a hunchback as an 80 year old. No, and you don't want to be frail. Yes, I don't, yeah. don't want to be frail. Um, and sometimes, um, you know, I can feel a little frail. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I am the first person to say that in this particular instance with, um, with the GLP-1 medication, that exercise is not, um, it's not the most important thing to, it's not the most important key to your, to your weight loss. Um, you know, when I started taking this medication, I didn't want to do anything completely radically crazy or what would be unsustainable for me, right? So some people take this medication and then go on a low carb keto diet and then start training for a marathon, you know, and, and trying to bodybuild and become Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, you know, none of that is sustainable to me. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why this medication has been so life altering for me is because um, I haven't radically changed the way I eat. And I want to be clear too that I was not a particularly unhealthy eater before. My issue was in the quantity and not the quality. Um, you know, I don't have a huge sweet tooth. Um, you know, I don't have to have dessert after every meal. So there wasn't a lot diet wise besides the amount of food that I was eating yeah. that needed to be changed for me. You know, I, I love a salad. I, I love a good piece of broccoli and some chicken and, and things like that. Um, so I didn't want to have to do anything that changed my habits drastically because if at some point in time I do have to go off of this medication, um, and I don't intend to, but if I do have to go off of this medication, um, you know, I didn't want to then have to go and do crazy things like eat three grams of carbs a day. Yeah. So. Fair. I don't think anybody needs to hear about my exercise routine because I've talked about that before. But I, I, on the other hand, am exercising. But my relationship with exercise kind of changed because of the weight loss. It made exercising easier and more fun because I lost that weight. So you enjoy exercising though. You, I did you when get I was some, fat. But you get some psychological benefits yeah. out of it. Whereas yeah. I'm, you know, you're the person who's like, yeah, let's go do this. Yeah. And you know, it might suck while we're doing it, but I'm going to feel great afterwards yeah. and stuff like that. Whereas I'm the person who's like, this just sucks all the way around yeah. before, after, during, in between. Yeah. But when I was fat, I didn't feel that. Uh, like it really, I mean, I worked out a little bit and it was check the box. I did something kind of workouts. So Majaro changed my exercise. Interesting. Pretty radically. Interesting. I think I'm proof positive though that you don't have to all of a sudden become a gym rat yeah. uh, in order to be successful on yeah. this medication. Talk to me about reactions from other people. It has been an interestingly mixed bag. Um, you know, starting from the beginning, uh, I think I shared with my primary care physician who was like, I really like this medication. I'm just not willing to prescribe it to people. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think some people think you're cheating, right? Oh yeah. You know, that the only way to lose weight is to eat celery and if you chicken just, breasts. If you just exercise and eat right, yep. all your problems go yep, away. Exactly. It's like, just walk, just move, just get your 10,000 steps in, things like that. And, and, and I think we know now that that doesn't work. Um, I mean, it does for some people. Yeah, I think, you know, for some people close to me, um, so I think people were hesitant about it at first because it is a medication, you know, and so I yeah. think people worried about, you know, oh, well, you're going to have side effects or um, you're going to have to stay on this medication for the rest of your life or things like that. Um, you know, we do know some people who are on a weight loss medication who have told no one. Um, you I know, think that's more common than not. Pr 
probably. I I am of the other camp where you know I, I, I'm not embarrassed about about taking it. Um, and again, it's been so life changing for me that I just want to know. I want other people to know that it is an option for them, and it is a very viable option yeah. for for people. Um, along those lines, so I started taking this medication three months before you started taking it. Mm -hmm. Um, what were your thoughts when I came to you and I said, I I'm going to take some medication? So I didn't know because I knew nothing about this. Mm. Like I didn't know anything about the drug. Um, we've since done a, a bunch of education on obviously reading, watching videos, talking to doctors. I've, I've talked to at this point probably five different doctors about the medication. There's a side note. They've all across the board been super positive about it. I have not heard one medical professional that I personally know say bad things about this medication, but I didn't know. And so from that perspective, I literally, I was like, well, if, if you want to, and it's going to be okay. But, you know, I mean, there's always that trepidation when, you know, your loved one's like, hey, I'm going to do this thing and you don't know anything about it. So I had that. Yep. But, you know, obviously we started to see results pretty quickly and I was happy for you. You were happy with the results. So mm -hmm. uh, how, I mean, Obviously, three months later, I was like, well, I'm going to do it too. But I didn't know. You know, I just, you worry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think my parents worried too. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I have friends who um, probably still worry about it. Um, and I think I have uh, friends who um, still might think that it is uh, cheating. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I don't care. Yeah. I, uh, you know, one of my colleagues who I, I like a lot, he's a really good dude. I have great respect for. At one point he, he said, man, you're looking really good. You lost this weight. And I was like, Hey, thanks. He's like, and you're doing it the right way. And I was like, what, what's the right way? And he's like, well, you're not taking Ozempic. I'm like, well, no, I'm, what I'm taking is actually stronger than that. And I think it kind of took him aback. And to this, you know, so I think from his perspective, and I don't know if he's changed his mind, I haven't asked him. It's all good either way. Dave, if you're watching this, it's all good. But um, he he was like kind of shocked when I I said, yeah, I'm, I'm I am taking a medication. So you know, is it cheating? I don't know. In this case, I'm willing to cheat. I am willing to cheat. It's I don't yeah. think it's cheating at all, which I think kind of leads us into sort of our last our last point that you wanted to make is yeah. is that there there are people out there who are gonna continually say that we're taking the easy road yeah. um, and it's cheating and just eat less, get your 10,000 steps in and you'll be fine. Yeah. And I think, you know, not only from a personal perspective, but I think the medical community at large, at large is starting to realize that obesity is more than just calories in, calories out. You know, there's hormones involved there's, um, you know, a, a big psychological component to it, um, you know, and these drugs tend to work uh, in multiple facets. Yeah. You know, Manjaro works not only with your dopamine receptors, but with your digestion. Intestinal and, hormones. Yes. Yeah. yeah, things like that. Um, you know, so I, I'm always a live, let live kind of person. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you do you. If you if you want to go eat three carbs a day um, and, and train for a marathon, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Um, I found what has worked for me in a long-term, sustainable way. Yeah. And when I say long-term, I want to be clear, too, that both of us intend to stay on this medication. And or similar. In, or similar. Yeah. In some capacity for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, and I know that that can kind of sound scary to some people, but the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, I was gonna have to stay on cholesterol medication for the rest of my life. You know, if I had to take blood pressure medication, I was gonna have to stay on that yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah. I don't see it as yeah. being any different than another tool to manage a health condition. Yeah, when you're, when you're 20 something, and considering having to take a medication for the rest of your life, that seems like a very different conversation. Uh, I'm in my 50s, she's in her 40s. At this point, almost everybody in our age bracket or above is on some sort of medication for the rest of their lives. 
And much like her, I was already on two statins looking at blood pressure meds, looking at other things. Like at some point I was going to be taking a whole litany of pills to try and manage what were probably obesity related problems. Whereas now I can just be on one medication to deal with the obesity itself. All my blood numbers, the last time I had a, had them drawn were excellent across the board. I won't even bother going into those, but everything radically changed. I'm not pre-diabetic anymore. And so I don't see this as a negative or a net negative. I see it as just kind of the cost of maintaining health for me. I, at one point, 15 years ago, 17 years ago, I was walking around at 190 pounds and probably 10 to 11% body fat with no medication, but I was training 14 hours a day, eating a crazy strict diet. And I foolishly said at that time, oh, this is maintainable, I could do this forever. Well, yeah, if you wanna keep training 14 hours a week, and eating that Wait, diet. A day or a week? A said. week, sorry. Okay. I'm, I apologize, a week. It was 14 hours a week, approximately. 10 to 14 hours a week. For most people, that is an unmaintainable schedule. When you were working towards that uh, physique and that body, um, you were eating no sugar, Yeah. very low carb, Yeah. no alcohol, yeah. no diet soda, um, you know, I don't even think you were putting like cream in your coffee at no. one point yeah. in time. Yeah, I, I was um, crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a little obsessive, um, you know, and the truth of the matter is, is that no matter how sustainable you think a lifestyle like that is, yeah. for most people, it's not. Yeah, yeah. And now, you know, I am exercising, but we're talking like three hours a week probably if we add it all up and I'm eating a relatively clean diet, but not a crazy strict diet. Like if somebody shows up with cookies, I'll eat one. I'm not gonna turn it down. Before I would, I'd be like, I'm not eating that. I'm not touching it. I remember throwing throwing a, a mild temper tantrum over having to eat stuff that wasn't gonna fit into my diet. And now I, you know, I just, I, I, I don't care. Like I do try and eat clean, but it's not an obsession, I guess. Yeah. and. I think we should actually talk a little bit about our diet. Um, I think people would probably be interested to know sort of how we eat and stuff like that because I think this idea of, of eating clean is a sort of a misnomer, right? Well, I think it kind of goes back to... means different things to different people. Right, exactly. Yeah. But I think, you know, most people perceive that as, you know, organic, you know, we don't we don't typically eat organic in our house. Um, I don't care. You know, uh, no processed. We we do eat processed food. I don't eat a lot of it though. Yeah. Not a lot, but yeah. we but we do yeah. eat it. We shop on the inside of the grocery store occasionally. Occasionally, yes, yes. right? I do eat bread. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we do. You eat bread almost every day. Yeah. Um, and so, and so do I. Um, you know, for me, I am unwilling to remove whole food groups or food categories yeah. from my diet. Um, one of the ways that this medication helps is. Again, you eat less than what you normally would just by the very nature of the medication because it suppresses your appetite and then delays your gastric emptying so you feel fuller for longer. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I was never a big breakfast eater. Sometimes I eat breakfast, sometimes I don't. Um, you know, sometimes I eat macaroni and cheese for lunch. Other times I will eat a salad. Uh, you know, we don't shy away from having dessert. My mm -hmm. point is, yeah. is that we aren't taking this medication and also eating low carb and also yeah. only eating, you know, yeah. green vegetables and monitoring our caloric intake. I don't count calories. Again, you, you record them. I wasn't for a long time. But I think you're doing that as a data point, not as a yeah. need to adjust or anything. Yeah, yeah I, probably for <laughs> nine or 10 of the months that I've been on this medication, I did not write down or otherwise track my food. I just didn't. Yeah, I, I never do. I just focused on like eggs for breakfast, a half a sandwich, and maybe some salad for lunch, a reasonable dinner that usually has like some chicken or something in it and maybe vegetables. Like, So it's not, not like, oh my God, we've got to eat a certain way, but I don't eat a lot of chips. I don't eat a lot of 
noodles, pasta, things like that. I do eat sandwiches though, like, uh, but I usually do a half sandwich, so it's got a bunch of meat on it and just half a slice of bread. But to be but, clear, you're eating a half of sandwich not because you are intentionally restricting yourself from the amount of calories in a whole sandwich, it's you are eating a half a sandwich because that's what your appetite allows yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to be really yeah. clear about that is that there is not there is not restriction. Yeah. Yeah. as a part of this, which I think is one of the reasons why this medication is in fact so successful. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know, I know we talked about food noise at the beginning. I mean, if you if you've never had any weight issues, then probably you don't know what we're talking about. But if you ever have, like that thought about your next meal seems to be ever present or what your next snack is. I don't really think about that very much anymore. And for a long time, you know, oh, what's going to be for dinner? What are we going to have for breakfast? You know, it's 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 real. It's crazy. It sounds crazy. Saying it now sounds crazy to me, but it's it's there. And I don't feel that now. Yeah. We we have nights where um you know, I'm like, what do you want for dinner? I, I don't know. What do you what do you want? That used to yeah. never happen in our house. Yeah. So, and I want to add too is that we still eat fast food. Yeah. You know, we haven't we haven't cut that out. Yeah. Of but our no, diets. we're talking like once a week. Yeah. Which is still. Yeah. You yeah. know, some people would go Oh my God, that's a lot. But yeah. um, you know, for yeah. some people, it's every day. So that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. I'm never going to try and force you to take a drug. I never say, "Oh my God, you have to do this." Well, I've sort of said it to some people, but you know, it's it's once again, it's a personal decision. It's a private decision. I 100% get it. But for us, like for me, for her, it's been amazing for us. And I, I, and you know, unless some other side effect or some negative crops up. I'm not really seeing a downside to staying on it. Yeah, me neither. Um, I am. You are in maintenance mode right now. I am moving in to maintenance mode, mode yeah. probably in the next two weeks or so. Yeah, would be my guess. Um, you know, which I'm I'm a little worried about. Um, again, it's a whole, it's a whole new set of challenges. Yeah, yeah. You know, after you've you've reached your goal, um, you know. But I'm excited. Um, you know, I think one of the things I was just thinking about this as you were talking is I think sometimes we see people now who are overweight um, and, and suffering because of their obesity yeah. and recognizing ourselves in that suffering. Yeah. And while I don't want to push anybody to take medication, I want people to know that there are new options yeah. out there. Yeah. And I think more coming. We didn't really go into it, but I know that at least three major drug manufacturers, to include Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Novo Nordisk, are looking at ways to create a GLP-1 receptor agonist that doesn't require injections. You know, if they can do it successfully in pill form, I think costs will come down. I think availability goes up. Obviously, there's a lot of competition in this market that also drives costs down. You know, is that going to help somebody this month? Nah, there's no way. But I think probably by the end of 2024, things are going to look pretty good for anybody out there who is interested in going down this road and doesn't have a substantive amount of money to throw at it because the, the drug companies don't make money if nobody's buying their product. So they've got to come up with a way to make this easier for more people. So I'm hopeful that this is just the beginning of something that's going to be a life changer for more people than just me and Mrs. Grey Dog. So the big reveal. The big reveal. How much weight have you lost? I have lost 62 pounds. Which is, we just did the math after much bloopering on camera, 31.96% of your body weight. Yeah. Which might as well call it 32%. It's within, what, hundreds of 32%. Yep. Which is astounding. That's like bariatric surgery level weight loss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you? I started at 228. I currently weigh 183 pounds as of this morning. And that is 19.73% of my body weight. So how many, what is that? Pounds total? Uh, 45 pounds. I feel like we need to redo this again. No, no, no. 45 pounds. Okay. So 19.7%. So not, not quite as impressive as you, but a good chunk of weight. And it put me from obese into 
just overweight. Oh, I'm in the uh, normal BMI category. You are. Now. You are. You're normal. I'm normal. <laughs> I've never been normal in my life. Your doctor told you to not go any lower. Yes. Your doctor said that's good. Don't go any lower. Yes. So. Talk about a mind. Quack. Yeah. Is that the first time you ever said? I heard yes. that in your life. It's the first time any medical professional has ever said to me. Don't lose any more weight. Don't lose any more weight. Or any weight. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Nuts. Nuts. Yeah. Good. Do you, have to, do you have to beep out the F word? Uh, I probably will. Oh. Yes. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so, final thoughts. Yeah. Wrap up. Um, thank you for finding the Strug. It has been a life changer for both of us. And I, sure. But I credit you with finding that initial research and making the leap, like going, no, we're going to do this. Because we were kind of in that definition of insanity, right? Like neither of us wanted to be fat, yep. but we were doing the same thing we always did. Yep. And we had to break out of it. And so Mrs. Gray Dog did it. She's the one who took that leap and made, made the change to break us out of it. And uh, when I saw her do that, like it inspired me to do the same thing. Yeah, I think there was, um, there was an element of desperation in there of trying yeah. to figure out how to break a lifelong cycle. And yeah. I think that that's what gives me the most hope about the future. Yeah. And going into maintenance is I feel fairly confident that with the help of continued help of this medication, um, that the cycle has been broken. Um, you know, talking about maintenance, um, you know, if anybody wants to see us again in six months, see where we are, yeah. hof hopefully we'll be the same. Yeah. You know, because the, there are still the doubters out there who are going, as soon as, yeah. as, soon as they go into maintenance, yeah. they're going to, you know, gain all their weight back or... Yeah. Things like that. I mean, people have repeatedly said, hey, what happens when you stop taking the medicine? Which we're not doing, by the way. But, And I always tell them, well, you, you gain all your you weight back. You gain your weight back. Yeah. Yep. What happens if you stop running 85,000 miles a day? Yeah. You're going to gain all your weight back. Or you're not going to be a runner anymore, that's for sure. What happens yeah. if you eat a dozen Krispy Kremes? Oh, I'd like some Krispy Kreme. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to gain your weight back. Yeah. So. Yeah. Guys, I'll end this here. I know it's probably going to be a huge and long video, but I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments, let me hear it. Good, bad, or indifferent, man. Hit me in the comments section. Uh, if it's directed towards Mrs. Gray Dog, I'll get her to weigh in and answer you. Normally, my videos aren't fitness related, and I don't usually drag poor Mrs. Gray Dog into them. But, uh, you know, something uh, new and different every now and again is not a bad idea. As always, guys, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, take care, stay safe. Talk to you soon. Get him, Jay.